Huh? Oh no. No, 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 I'm telling you, there is something here. I can hear it. Don't tell me that I don't know what's going on in my own apartment. I can hear something rustling around in my room. I need you to get out here and get rid of it. Are you serious? I have to look for it myself? Fine, you guys are worthless. All right, where is it coming from? Is it, no, that's just, okay, that's just that, wait, maybe it's, you no, know, booster packs, that's, that can't be it. That's just Yu-Gi-Oh cards, you know. Maybe, wait, what is that? I hear something. Wait, is it down there? What? <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 10 Minute Testing, my favorite series that I do all the time on my channel. Good afternoon, Jank enthusiasts. I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. And because I'm an expert on deck building, dueling, and of course, banless reactions, I have put together the greatest deck of all time. Petite Moth, Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth Turbo. This deck is unbeatable. It is literally never lost. You will see later how to win with this deck. It's really not that hard. Simply put together the deck, draw five cards, and you win every time. This video is sponsored by Warlock of the Seashore. Warlock of the Seashore has recently released an amazing new product, the Sorcery 3. 300th festival. This new product is a ticket to a festival where you could celebrate the awesomeness of Warlock of the Seashore. This ticket costs a small $1 million fee. And here's the best part. You don't even have to, or even get to attend the festival. Simply send in your $1 million and bam, you have just spent $1 million. Thanks to Warlock of the Seashore for sponsoring this video. You are now looking at the perfect deck list. First of all, we have the three Petite Moth, the most important part of this deck. I mean, 300 attack, 200 defense. I mean, what else do I need to say? This small but deadly creature is better off avoided. Unless you're playing this deck, you definitely do not want to avoid this card because it's crazy. Then we've got three Pin the Bullseye. They can special summon themselves for free. They can burn for 200 every turn. Plus, you know, if there's multiple on the field, it can be more than that. Three Max C because we're playing on Master Duel and Insects. I mean, come on. When you're playing Insects, you get to use Max C. That's just how it works. Then we have more Battle Wasp. These guys can be normal summon. They can add Pin the Bullseye. They can add any of our other Battle Wasp, but usually it's Pin the Bullseye to Special Summon. Goki Bull, he's going to search whenever we send him to the graveyard, which is awesome. Then we have another Battle Wasp. We can Special Summon itself. Three Scout Buggy. They can Special Summon from deck. All that different stuff. It's basically a free uh, Link to and stuff like that. Then we've got three Beat Trooper Scale Bomber. Special Summon itself from hand when you have summoned an Insect. They also have a Negate built in, which is pretty nice. Resonance Insect, of course, is going to be searching our big stuff like Doom Dozer. Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth. Sometimes, but not usually because we're trying to keep it in the deck for the Cocoon of Ultra Evolution. Then we have the Battle Wasp, which is normal summon. You can special summon a level three, which can work pretty well with our Beat Trooper Armor Horn. If you add it and then you have an extra normal summon, you get to normal summon this from hand, the special summon from grave. A lot of stuff can happen there. Mimicking Man Eater Bug, because it's hilarious. You set it, you flip it up, you get to steal other attack, can't be destroyed by, you know, battle and then card effects of the same type. So you can change the type to the one you want it to be. It's crazy. Then we have Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth, the most important card in this deck. This card wins you every game. It's insane. I mean, look at this effect. Can I Normal summoner set must first be special summoned from your hand by tributing one petite moth on your sixth turn or later after it was equipped with Cocoon of Evolution. Wow, that's so good. It's insane. Like the effect is amazing. Then we got Doom Dozer, a very big guy that can be special summoned by banishing two from the graveyard. Very good. Then we have a Ghidorla, Kaijus, Insects, cool. Harvey's Feather Duster will always be in your hand because you, if you need it, it's gonna be there. Terraforming can grab, of course, our giant ballpark, which is a lot of fun. You know, just sending petite moths to the grave, special summoning it. Once they see three petite moth going hog wild on their life points, they basically shrivel up and die. It's over. It's just one of the greatest plays you can do. Three Amulet of Ambition. I mean, it's amazing. Quip it to a P Petite Moth, attack a level seven, and he has like 5,000 attack. It's insane. Then we have, of course, the Cocoon of Ultra Evolution. Just in case you don't love the amazing effect of Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth, awaiting six turns equipped with Cocoon of Evolution, you could use this instead on any insect with an equip spell. I don't know. It's not as good, but it could work out, I guess. And then a Called by the Grave, whatever. Extra deck, we got Slacker Magician. We got all kinds of level ones, you know, stuff that we can go into Zeus with. We've got the number three Cicada King. We've got Downer, and of course, the Zeus. We've got Link One for the Link spider for the petite moth you want to link that off a couple of other link ones like link Karibo. we got relinquished anima to steal your opponent's monsters three peak of felina because that can equip from deck that can get you your access to your cocoon of ultra evolution then you've got the uh b trooper armor horn which is pretty nice because uh it basically gives you an additional normal summon it also can be special summon from grave so it's more bodies to link off with then the papillon it's 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 an okay card it can't really link climb very well because its effects can't it's a first effect is placing a counter and then after that's kind of eh. and then you go into the b trooper because he's a big tower guy but basically the real Real plan here get the petite moth the perfectly ultimate gray moth out and you will never lose if you lose with this deck you are bad at dueling keep that in mind so do not lose i know this is supposed to be a 10 minute testing but this deck is too good this is exactly how the deck works every time it is a hundred percent success rate so i'm just going to show you one duel where 
this is basically what happens every time you use this deck. So first of all, this guy's gonna activate the Pot of Extravagance. He's gonna do a little drawing out of his deck. He's gonna set five back row. Naturally, because we have an amazing deck, we have Harpy's Feather Duster in our hand. We're gonna draw a card, which is the Beat Trooper Scout Buggy. Activate the Harpy's Feather Duster. He's going to flip up an Eldritch card, which means he's playing Eldritch. I mean, I'm not going to read all those cards because we're about to wipe him from the field. But, you know, when there's so special summoning, you just activate Max C. It's simply that good. You draw two cards on your own turn and you're off to the races. He activated Pot of Extravagance, draw two. I activate Max C, I draw two. That's just how it goes with this deck. Then he's going to summon his Eldritch. Okay, whatever. He's big. He's scary. Whatever. What are we going to do? We're just going to wipe his back row. Then we're going to wipe the floor with him. So we're going to spe special summon or normal summon our scout buggy, special summon one from the deck. Then we're going to use our little B guy, special summon him, burn him for 200 damage. Then we're going to uh, link summon into the one, the only link to B trooper armor horn. From here, we're able to get an additional normal summon. We're going to summon our B trooper from our hand. We're going to special summon the maxi from the graveyard. That gives us more link material. We're going to go into yet another link. Link. This one it will be the Insector Pika Felina. The Pika Felina is going to come out, activate the effect as soon as it's Link Summoned, pitch the Goki Pole, target the Maxi, equip the Resonator Insect. We get the uh, Goki Pole effect from Grave, add the Man Eater Bug. Then we're going to target three in our graveyard with the Pika Felina effect, shuffle them up, draw one. We draw, of course, another card that could be Special Summoned because we're that good. We then link it to a Link 4, which is the Hercules Beetle Guy. And now we activate our Armor Horn from Graveyard, banish three, bring back the Armor Horn. So now we've got another guy in the field. We're going to activate our Cocoon of Ultra Evolution. Special summon the perfectly ultimate Great Moth, just how you drew it up in the deck. We're going to draw the Doom Dozer. Doom Dozer is then going to banish two from the graveyard. We're going to get the Resonator Insect effects and Goki Pole. Go to battle phase. We're going to attack over with the B Trooper Invincible Atlas. Then we're going to attack with our Doom Dozer for 2,800. We're going to mill one card from the top of the deck to 1,000. And then finally, for game, the perfectly ultimate Great Moth. And that is just how this deck works, ladies and gentlemen. It is that good. It is that powerful. You will win like this every single game. There was no luck involved. Just make sure to use this deck list. All right, let's discuss the pros and cons of this deck. The pros. It wins every game that you play. Secondly, it contains the most beloved monster in Yu-Gi-Oh. You have the Petite Moth in your deck. You now have the card that everyone wants. You are the cool kid. And that leads me into the third point. Your friends are going to respect you now. You've become popular. You're cool. You're that guy that has the coolest Yu-Gi-Oh deck and the coolest Yu-Gi-Oh card that never loses a Yu-Gi-Oh duel. So there's a couple pros and nothing too serious. But then we get into the cons, which are, I mean, they're pretty major. If you're playing this deck, you might have too much fun. You're going to win so many duels that you might stop having fun. Into my second point, this makes Yu-Gi-Oh too easy. If you like Yu-Gi-Oh because if there's a challenge, you got to think, you got to read, read, huh? maybe not that. You will simply never have to think about how to play Yu-Gi-Oh again. It's autopilot. You use the deck, you win. That's just how it works. And finally, this deck will make you too popular. People will be trying to take pictures with you, get your autograph, be trying to steal your shirt so they can sell it on eBay. You will be way too famous. You'll be the most well-known person in the world. So, yeah, this deck has a lot of cons. So honestly, after all this, my final decision is you probably should not play this deck. Okay, but in all seriousness, this was a really fun collab to do. Make sure you guys go check out MBT's video. We did a little bit of a collab. If you haven't figured it out already, obviously we don't do 10 minute testings on this channel, but this was fun to do. I actually have been playing this deck on my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Ruxin34, and it's been hilarious and really fun. So if you guys enjoyed the video, if you want to see more goofy stuff, maybe with MBT in the future, let me know in the comments. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Watching. See you in the next one. Shout out to Tone Fo Show, Daxter, JT Cho, Puffins of Doom, Ernesto Deanda, Dizzy Hoppus, Choice 333, Micycle, James Jance, TCG Trusted Cards, America Deutzer, Supreme Sage 21, and then the Show, Ian Musa, Junior Barty, Mimic Gecko, and Thomas McLean. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.